Uh, first tip with any kind of piece where you tune down a string, um, always go below the note you're intending to tune to. So if you're a G and you're going to F sharp, go quite a bit lower, bring it back up. Then when you get there, it won't start shifting up a lot when you start playing the piece. If you don't do that, if you just tune down to the note, often you find yourself going sharp very quickly. This kind of helps. You can also bend the string out like this um, to kind of let the string settle in F sharp. Really the thing I look for in this piece uh, is making sure that the melody notes don't ring on when we're crossing strings. Here is an example in bar five at first. So we have C in the melody, to a D, to an E, and back to a D. And what I don't want to do when I'm playing is have this E ring on over the D because it kind of fractures the melody and splits it in two. Don't like that sound, it's a clashy sound. So what I'm doing there is blocking off the first string with the with a fourth finger. It's why a lot of the time um, we have to go against the training of keeping the fingers bent in every joint. I always talk about this, how in the left hand we need really, really good bends to make sure we're not blocking off strings. But a lot of the time we need to block off strings. So we have to kind of break free of that habit, that good technique to mute strings where necessary. Here's another example, bar seven. We have the A minor chord here, and then B, A, B. And I really hate going and having the notes ring on over each other and clash. So. I would put, put some slow practice in from the second beat of that bar, playing the B, putting your pinky down, your fourth finger down on the A, and blocking off the B at the same time. So my, my fourth finger there is blocking off the B string, and then as I play the next B, I come off the A, so that we only have one note ring in the melody any one time. Sounds so much better than this. Um, where it just rings on and, 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 and blurs and um, blends and sounds nasty. Same thing in bar 13. Uh, I, I block off the E string with the, the, the fourth finger again. And I don't keep the fourth finger on. Some people might think, oh, it's good to keep the fourth finger on. But in terms of the melody, it, it's not not nice. Pay attention to the barret in bar five and again in bar thirteen. Um, I think a certain amount of arm movement can help you here. It's really important to remember with barrets and with just any chord in general that it doesn't start and stop in the hand and the fingers. It starts all the way through the arm and, and the back. So. When I'm playing this, if I'm going from the previous bar, I've got my arm you know, quite far out actually, kind of, you know, sitting comfortably. And then suddenly for the C chord, I'll, I'll, I'll bring the elbow in to enable my first finger to do the barret and these fingers to stretch to reach their notes. So don't don't be stuck in a position with, with your arm. Let it, let it kind of guide your hand into the various chord shapes that you need to play. There is quite a lot of jumping around with the with the left with the uh, plucking hand, fretting hand there. Sorry. You can see there. So come in for that bar. You must separate your first and second finger as well. That's really important. Um, we can't really do this barry and keep the notes on if we're if the first and second finger are joined. Um, uh, lastly, try and vary the repeats um, in the first two lines, make something different about them. I play the, the repeat of the first line a bit more Ponticello and I play the repeat of the second line a bit more Tasto, just to throw in something nice to, um, to vary it. And 
above all your needing to memorize the chord shapes because because of the third string and, and it's how it's different if you're stuck sight reading any of this or even vaguely sight reading it then you're likely to kind of play that as the first chord because you're used to the A being on the second fret etc so kind of memorize these shapes and do away with the music as soon as you can uh, and lastly the change in time signature and the change in the, the kind of division of the beat um, if you find that hard what I would suggest is putting the metronome on 45 BPM so minims for the first section like this because then when you get to bar 8 and you're playing these two chords that beat becomes our dotted minim or the beats 1 and 4 of the next section back to bar 8 so you can practice uh, transitioning between bar 8 and bar 9 with that division of the beat it's really really hard to do that if you've got crotchets going uh, if you've got 90 BPM going there um, so stick a metronome on 45 use the minim beat for the 4-4 section to get you into there 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, five. should be 4, 5, 6 of course but you, you get what I mean um, there we go thanks <laughs>